Hi! Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, Episode 6. My name is Laura. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Fluffy K, on Twitter and Instagram as Fluffy Kira. All the show notes and some of my other writings can be found at my blog, which is thecornerofknitandtea.com. And I also have a shop in which I sell my hand spun, and that's the Stash Buckler on Etsy. Welcome! I've actually been away this weekend. We had a family wedding. As you can see, I got a little bit of sun, <laughs> and I'm running around a little bit trying to clean up and get ready for work on Monday. Um, so this episode will be just a little bit shorter than normal, but I did want to record an episode before I lost the light today. So hi, welcome to my new viewers. Welcome back to everyone who's been keeping up with me. Thank you so much for the comments and for um, joining me again. I'm up to, at last count, I think 84 subscribers on YouTube, which is super exciting since this is only my sixth episode. Um, I am waiting until I hit 100 and then I'm going to do a little contest. I haven't decided what the prize is yet, um, but I promise you it will be good. So stay tuned. Um, that might happen the next episode, um, or it might be episode eight. We'll just have to see how things go. Um, but thank you to those of you who have subscribed and left comments. Uh, it's so exciting to me what a wonderful community this is. Uh, I've been watching a bunch of your podcasts and leaving comments, and it's just so neat to see um, what a really nice and sweet and encouraging community of people, um, knitters and spinners and YouTubers are, and uh, I've been having a really fun time uh, refreshing my page multiple times a day and trying to respond to all of you, and um, I just want to say thank you for joining me. So let's get started. I just brewed a cup of tea when we got home. Um, I actually brewed this hot and then poured it over ice because I really wanted an iced treat as I was running around today. Today's tea is... David's Tea, um, it is a sample that I got with another order, and it is called Strawberry Rhubarb Parfait. And um, I was a little bit skeptical. I was glad they sent it to me in a uh, sample size so that I could try it out. I just brewed it up. It's got apple, hibiscus, raisins, carrot, yogurt bits, uh, beetroot, strawberry, and rhubarb. So it's actually quite good. It does say that it has milk products in it, so it was supposed to be a little bit creamy. Um, which I do taste. It's really light and fruity and summery, and I actually might be inclined to order some of this, um, sort of in a full-size packet, because it tastes really good. I can definitely taste the strawberry, and I think the rhubarb gives it a little bit of a tang, rather than just being super sweet strawberry. So that is what I'm sipping today. What I'm wearing um, this time I decided not to wear one of my own creations, but I am wearing a creation um, of someone in the community. This is a Navi Sama silk scarf, and it's just beautiful. It's kind of a steely gray and a pink. I guess it's better from further back. And it's basically an eternity loop. I can um, fold it a couple times around my neck, or I can just wear it once, loose and flowy. And it's super soft, and I'm just really enjoying it. I was just looking for a little something else to wear. Um, I will link his shop in the shop notes. Um, it is Navi, Navi Knits on Etsy, and he's also on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram, and he's just producing some beautiful scarves, um, and they're really reasonable. So if you're looking for a little something to jazz up your wardrobe, I would definitely recommend him. So there you go. Hi, Navi. Anyway, I will get into what I've been working on today. I have actually um, been spending a lot of time on just a few projects, so I got a lot of progress on those projects, but I don't have as many different things to show you. So I will start right in with I have finished the first spooky sock and yes it is crazy long. I have very small feet. My feet are size six and a half so I was knit a fairly short foot and then I have all kinds of yarn left and usually I stop early um, and just go ahead and knit myself a shorter sock and then do something with the leftovers and I contemplated doing that this time because I thought it would be really cute to knit some of those leggies for Roxy um, for Halloween but then I decided you know what I want knee socks I am going to knit the entire skein. So this is almost one entire skein of Knit Picks Felici in the spooky colorway. I believe it's around 220 yards fingering weight. And what I did was, please excuse my sock blockers, I actually made these myself and they're very wonky. They are not quite the right shape at the right spots. Um, so I knit my toe, I did a Judy's Magic cast on, and I want to say I cast on 
either 12 or 14 total. Um, I followed David Schultz's recipe from his Sew Up Talk toe up sock recipe um, for his increases for the toes. I really like that. He increases every round for a few rounds um, and then does every other round. So it gives you like a lot built up right at the beginning. Um, but I really like the way it feels on my foot. So I went through the foot and I think the last time I talked to you, I was in these color stripes here. Um, then I did a fish lips kiss heel, which I linked last week in the notes and I will link again. It is a great short row heel that does not involve wraps and turns. And um, I believe the reason it's called a fish lips kiss heel is because if you actually let it go, the, um, the join here kind of looks like fish lips. So, and then I just kept going. I added a few extra stitches in um, to the gusset as I went up the back. I think I um, knit most of the sock 56 stitches on a size one, that's 2.25 millimeters. And then I added, I want to say, uh, two, four, six, eight, either eight or 10 more, I think, no, 12. I ended up with uh, 68 stitches, and so I'm hoping that will fit my calf nicely. And then since these were longer socks up at the top, I did about two inches of ribbing um, because I'm hoping that will hold them up. So that is the first sock done. I have yet to cast on the second sock because I just finished this in the car on the way home today. So I will be doing that this week, and hopefully by the end of the month we'll have some great Halloween socks to wear and show you. The other project I have been spending quite a bit of time on is um, the baby blanket that I said I was doing um, for a friend of my mother's. That is the Sugar, Blum, Sugar Plums Blanket by Danielle Chalson. And I'm doing it in Madeline Tosh uh, Sport Weight in the Night Blooms colorway. Again, that's kind of a pinky purple mauve. Um, it's got a little bit of gray in it. And it's really kind of, it's a sweet color, but it's also a little sophisticated. And last time, I think I just had a couple inches done. I am now five and a half repeats, no, five full repeats into the pattern. It calls for 12. I don't know if I'm gonna make 12 because um, I'm changing the gauge slightly and I changed the width slightly, so I don't know how that's gonna relate to the length. Um, I'm probably just under halfway, but I might be just over halfway or right at halfway, we'll have to see. It calls for 12 repeats um, and I don't know whether I'm gonna end up, ideally I'll probably end up about 11, but um, I just don't know. So I am five repeats in and I spent a bunch of time this weekend in the car working on this. And close up, you can see this beautiful cable pattern. And this is gonna be probably, um, it's called carriage sized, so more for a stroller blanket than a huge blanket. Um, I'll have to see what it blocks out to. My guess is I'll probably get, um, the pattern calls for about 32 inches, and my guess is that's about where I'm at right now. So again, this is the Sugar Plums Blanket by Danielle Chalson. There'll be a link in the notes to the pattern. And then the yarn is Mad Tosh in the Night Blooms colorway and it's sport weight, um, which I decided to do because it is a baby blanket for a baby in California. So, and I really like how that is knitting up, um, although I can't tell in the light whether it looks like it's pooling a little bit, although that just is a danger of, um, of using indie yarns. I am actually um, alternating. I've got three balls that I'm working at the moment and I'm knitting each row in a different ball. Um, so I'm trying to minimize all the color variations in that um, by, by carrying them all three at once, which is a little complicated to um, finagle when they're sitting next to me, but once I get started, I'm good to go. So that is the baby blanket. So, and I hope that I'll be finishing that by the end of this month. Um, so that I can send that off. I believe the baby is going to be a late October or early November baby, so it's not super urgent, but I want to get it done and get it sent off in time. So that actually ends the knitting. I have about six million things that I want to cast on. The weather has started to change. It was actually very cool this week, and all of a sudden I wanted to knit all the sweaters. So, and of course I'm not letting myself cast on another sweater until I finish the sleeves on the stripy caramel sweater, which I talked about several weeks ago and still have not gotten back to. But now that the weather has changed, I think um, I will be much more motivated to sit and knit with wool and get those sleeves knocked out because I'm sure I could do it in just a few days if I just sat down and put my mind to it. So um, I will probably try and finish the baby blanket first and then sneak in those sleeves at the end of this month if I have a little extra time. 
Um, and then I am going to be doing a test knit for a friend. I will show you that next week. It is a hat pattern. Um, and I took the wrong size needle with me on vacation, which is why it's not already started because I was planning to show that to you. Um, but that will be a fun and quick knit. It's a lacy, um, kind of a beanie hat, although I guess um, it can be knit to be a little bit slouchy too, so I'll have to see how that how that turns out, um, and I will share that with you next week as well as um, notes on the pattern, uh, which will be forthcoming. It's a knit by uh, Chrissy Prang, Left Side Knits. She did a couple of the shawls that I have showed you previously. So, and then I have all kinds of things that I want to cast on in the next month or two. Just, um, I'd like to get started on some more Christmas gifts. Um, Roxy's first birthday is coming up, and I think I'm going to knit her an owlet sweater by Kate Davies. And I have the yarn, I just need to look at the pattern a little bit, um, and decide it's a turtleneck pattern or a yoked collar pattern pullover. And I'm not sure whether I want to do a pullover or see if I can turn it into a cardigan, because I think a cardigan might be a little easier with a one-year-old rather than having to get it all over her head. And it might be nice to just have it buttoned up or for her to be able to wear it open as she's running around. So those are the couple things that I'm thinking about casting on soon, and I will, um, I'm trying to keep myself from casting them on by finishing the projects that are in progress right now, so hopefully I won't have something to show you next week for them, um, but I may if I give in and, and try and start a little something new. So that brings me to spinning. Um, in the last couple weeks I've been working on a two-ply combo and last week I showed you um, one bobbin and one braid and they are both by Dripping Fiber Studios, uh, which is Kim, she's great. And one of them was a merino cashmere nylon and um, that was in the colorway Maypole and I showed you that bobbin last week. And then the other was, I thought it was the same fiber, but it was actually just a merino cashmere. It had no nylon in it. So um, I spun that one up this week. And that is, oh, you know what? I lied. This is um, merino cashmere nylon, but it is Matista's cotillion. And this is um, merino cashmere, and this was the maypole. And so I spun this one up. And as you can see, this braid had a ton more green in it. Um, and I actually spun it a little bit differently. This braid I tore into small strips, so I would get lots of short repeats of color. And this one I actually only tore into a couple strips, so that I got much longer repeats of color. Um, and I thought that might play well and give some interesting yarn that would kind of subtly stripe a little bit. So we're going to have to see how that comes out. I have not had time to ply that, although I suspect actually that's on the list for tonight. I didn't take my wheel with me this weekend, um, which is why I have no spinning, finished spinning to show you, um, because actually everything that I, this bobbin I spun Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and finished that before we left. So these will get spun together tonight. They will get washed and thwacked and will be ready to go back to, um, they are a custom spin for a friend of mine. And I will probably wait to mail that off to her until next week's podcast so that I can show you what the yarn looks like. And then I'm actually going to get back to the two if by hand, um, the explosion, and I think that was BFL Silk. Um, and I showed you that two weeks ago and told you that's what I was going to do, but then I jumped, I had this one jump the line so that I could get it done and get it off to my friend. So hopefully by next weekend I will have a bobbin to show you, and perhaps, depending on when I record, I might have finished yarn, but I suspect it's more likely it will just be a bobbin. Um, but I will have this to show you as finished yarn. So I believe that's all I have for you today. I know it's a really short podcast, but like I said, we um, we went out of town for a family wedding, and I've been working really hard on the couple projects that I have going and have made a lot of progress, so I just don't have as many interesting things to show you. Um, but I am interested to hear what you're knitting. I would love to hear if um, fall temperatures have come to your area and what you might be knitting for the fall and whether you have sort of gotten some of that fall spirit where you just want to knit all the warm things now that it's getting a little cooler. Um, because this week it has just been a, ooh, I want to knit that sweater and I want to knit that pattern. Oh, and I need another cowl and I need another hat. And I've just been going crazy looking at all these wonderful things to knit. And actually I have so much yarn in my stash that I even have everything ready to knit these projects other than the fact that I need to finish the other stuff first. <laughs> So that's what I've been up to, but I would love to hear um, what you're looking forward to. Please leave me a comment here on YouTube and let me know, or leave me a comment on my blog at the corner of Knit and Tea, or find me elsewhere. Um, like I said, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well. 
And I guess that's about it for this week. So I hope you have a wonderful week going forward. And I will be back next weekend, hopefully with more content. Um, and until then, I would say happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and have a good week. Thanks. Bye.